<laughs> oh boy, this we'll is never jokes, start. man. This is jokes we'll before never... the show's even started. Uh, um, you know? oh, man, Monday, you know what we've got to do? Monday, we've actually got to, this is like on a serious, serious note, we got to just record what happens before the show. Exactly. Because we, what, we logged on, what, 50 minutes ago? <laughs> and what happened in those 50 minutes? No one will ever know. Exactly. But maybe, maybe, maybe that's what actually is going to be the success of this podcast. Maybe it's the you stuff start before. doing beforehand. Yeah, yeah exactly. and forget the podcast. Oh. Just do that. <laughs> Either that, or we're going to get arrested. Like you know, one of those things, man. Right? Oh, yeah. um, They've got to fight us first. <laughs> All right, so folks, thanks for downloading episode one hundred and ninety-five. Wow. Oh my gosh. Um, mm. So listen, yeah, thanks for being with us today. So we've got another great episode for you. We've got some film reviews. We've got, uh, obviously, some stuff on streaming that we want to talk about, some trailers, some really weird trailers, yep. actually, that we've got to speak about. And, um, yeah, and obviously moving you. So, But before we do any of all that, let's get into the shout-outs, Devel. Yep, we've got a, quite a few shout-outs. And thank mm-hmm. you, everyone, for contributing on, especially Instagram. Instagram is where we get a lot of our interactions and conversations. I want to shout out quite a few people. In, in response to a post that you put out, <laughs> Uh, a bit of a review of the film Men that we did last week. Go check that out in episode 194. Uh, Men, a really weird film by, what's his name again? Alex uh, Garland. Yep. Sci-fi horror film. Go check it out. Really, really crazy film. But again, funny uh, <laughs> review. So, yeah, go just, the review is funny, man. Seriously. <laughs> going to just shout out, just throw out some names here. So, big shout out goes out to Natalie 24th, Charlie Jar UK, Bath 79, Carmen, Gloria, HF, Ciel Noir 3, go check out her page, great page, Fifi 619, it sounds like a wrestling move, like, you know, uh, Rey Mysterio, 619. Yes. Uh, (laughs) And Cloud Watcher Uno, so yeah, massive shout out goes out to all you lot, thank you for responding on Instagram and keep all the interactions coming. Let us know what kinds of films you want us to, to talk about. Let us know if you want to be on the podcast. If you want to be on the podcast, let us know. Us. Honestly, anyone is welcome and everyone is welcome. So, yeah, jump on board. Yeah. And if you've got like a weird, funny film that you want to speak about, more, you know what? Those are the movies that we love. Like, yeah. listen, look, you saw it. If, if you listen, go on, on our Instagram page and watch the clip of Deval speaking about men. And um, for me, anyway, listening to it, it was just the funniest thing. And then watching him to the whole <laughs> that is just like amazing man seriously so listen thanks for that uh, we hope you keep listening and we hope you enjoy the show and listen any comments suggestions like let us know we will be listening um let's check out uh movie news devour now um let's do this yeah man so hercules devour what have we seen has there been a live action film of hercules before i don't know i can't recall yeah remember the rock had one the Rock had one, uh, oh, yeah, oh, right. know, not even, not 10 years ago, maybe eight years ago, maybe, I think. And this is when uh, he was transition. This is when he was just kind of like coming out of wrestling, wasn't it? Or something? No, nah, even or after Was he that, still in wrestling? Just, uh, no, he was, I think this was him fully as a movie star, I think. Damn. I think he was doing, I think now and again, he'll make special appearances in wrestling, but he wasn't wrestling full time. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. I don't think so. But yeah, Hercules has come out before. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, the news here is, I mean, if you're interested in this, I mean, I reckon this will be pretty good. But yeah, Hercules, um, you know, is they, they, they're working on a new Hercules movie and Disney want Guy Ritchie to deliver this. Because remember, Guy Ritchie, he directed um, Aladdin, the live action yeah. version of Aladdin. And that was a, I didn't realize, man, that was a big hit. Yes, I actually watched it and I Yeah, I, I remember you it. talking about it. Yeah, it was cool. So that did really, really well for, um, you know, for, it's got 95, that movie, Aladdin, it's got 95% on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, 8 out of 10 on IMDb. Serious? That's, that's a high mark. Are you sure? <laughs> Whew, okay. Um, I think it is that one, or is it the other one? No, oh, I believe shit. You. No, that was the 92 version. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say, that's, that's high. <laughs> you can see what the 2008 version... Oh, right. Okay. Well, listen, 6.9. 6.9. That's still decent. Yeah, yeah. That's that is still, still good, man. Yeah, that's, that's still, still decent. decent. So um, that took a shitload of money. So I reckon um, they've kind of tapped up 
uh, Guy Ritchie because obviously he's done, he's mm. delivered this kind of like big budget movie. And remember, don't forget the Sherlock Holmes movies. Those those have taken mm. kind of like a lot of money. And there's going to be a third um, part to that going to be coming out pretty soon as well, I think. So he's no stranger to doing big budget movies. So yeah, kind of, if you like that whole story of Hercules, I can't even remember the whole kind of backstory with it. I, did, I mean, with the Rock movie, do you remember it at all? Oh, I think some of it, some of it uh, was around the twelve labors of Hercules, and you know yeah. the mythological the, the story of Hercules. Yeah, the trials, uh, or some people say Heracles. Uh, depends mm-hmm. on if you're Italian or Greek, but uh, you know the you know the, the things that he had to do to prove himself. Uh, many different things. You know, I think he had to wrestle a bear or a lion. I think it was, and yeah. uh, he had to I think go to the the, the, the gates of hell and. Uh, fight was it Cerberus, the dog that guards the gates of hell? Wow! Of uh, of the underworld, many things yeah. he had to do anyway. You know, so. you know, you know, you're like, you know, your mythology, <laughs> man. You're like, <laughs> you know, know seriously, know it's great. That. But listen, aren't these great stories though? If they bring yeah. these to life, like I reckon they're great yeah. stories. Like you know, we saw Roth. Was it? Yeah, we see you know Clash of the Titans and all that sort of stuff. And although they like script wise and plot wise, they might be a bit thin, mm. but the whole action and the whole kind of yeah. like, oh yeah, man, seeing these, they, you know, they, they're, they're fine. They're good. So hopefully we will definitely see um, Hercules on the big screen. Let's move on to Blade Deval. Mm. This is going to be coming out um, part of phase four Marvel. It's not going to be coming out this year, folks. So just to kind of let you know that it's coming out next year, isn't it Deval? It's coming out, yes, I believe it is next year. I'm not sure when next year, but yeah, yeah next year some sometime. I think maybe summer, but it could be late. Mm. It could be late next year, because it's kind of going to be like a, a darker toned film, isn't it? So it could be, you know, October onwards next year. Right, okay. And then what's the news? Give us some casting kind of like uh, news on this one, because this sounds interesting. Yeah, so we've heard that, a uh, yeah, so Blade, Daywalker... Uh, obviously played by Bruce Lee Snipes in the past, now going to be played by Maharshala Ali. Uh, he is going to have a daughter. Mm. So, yeah, he's been, you know, he's been, they call him a day walker. Seems like he's been walking by night too and getting up to things. So, yeah, he's going to have a daughter, which hasn't really happened before. Not that I've seen, maybe in the comics, possibly, but yeah, he's going to have a daughter. He's going to be played by someone called Milan Ray. He's been in a okay. few... Uh, you know, films and shows in the past, 14-year-old actress. And it's going to, I guess, provide a different spin on Blade as a person, his responsibilities. And, you know, as a parent, you're going to want to protect your child. And maybe yeah. that's what, maybe that's going to be something that's going to be uh, the main focus of his, uh, I guess, his actions in the film. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, an interesting one. And I think it's not a surprise because it's Disney. So, you know, Disney like to have that kind of, you the know, familial kind of, yeah, that's that familiar that, and sentiments in the film, family, kids, and stuff. Yeah. So, I hope it doesn't make it too childish. I yeah, because this is hard. It needs to, and especially the love that people have for the Wesley Snipes films. You know, there's got to be that kind of thing. It's like imagine if they turned like you know Deadpool into kind of like you mm. know Deadpool has a kid or something like that. It's just I don't know. It oh just wouldn't. Gosh. Yeah, it would, it would just kind of throw things up. Yeah. Um, what do you reckon about a team up with uh, Kit Harrington? Do you reckon that'll happen? Yes, it will happen. Because of the way, because of the way Eternals ended. Do you remember that? Yeah, I mean they have to link it in, otherwise it's senseless. And I think the way Marvel work and how they you know, the foresight that they have for the characters and storylines, and they've put it in now, so they've got to see it through. And it really does fit the the tone of Blade with you yeah. know, the Ebony Blade and its souls and things like that. So I think it should work, should work. Yeah, so, um, yeah, any more news on that one, we definitely, definitely will let you know, kind of anticipating uh, that movie. Can't wait to watch it. Now let's move on to this, another big franchise for Disney. Remember, folks, Disney, they they gobbled up kind of like Fox and all the movies, um, you know, that were under the banner of Fox. And one of those was the Planet of the Apes franchise. And I'm talking about, you know, you can go back to the 60s and 70s, you know, that whole kind of franchise that was going on over there. I think there were like about six movies over there. And then Tim yeah. Burton did a reboot which didn't kind of work out, but I enjoyed. And then they kind of rebooted them again. 
and um, check this out. So there's some positive news coming out of Disney regarding another plan, the Planet of the Apes reboot. And apparently there is a script going around and the talk is that Disney are very, not just impressed, they are very impressed with the script, Deval. So very, very impressed. Yeah. So what this means is um, they are looking to create a new trilogy with this one. So, and remember Matt Reeves, he directed, yeah, he did the, the Planet of the Apes, didn't he? Matt Reeves. Yes, yes, he did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then he went on to direct, obviously, The Batman, which we kind of watched earlier on this year. But, um, yeah, man, so I think this is going to happen. Obviously, it's not going to be happening, obviously, this year, next year, maybe probably around about 2025. Maybe we might kind of see this coming mm. out, maybe the first, or we, or maybe at the end of this year or beginning of next year, we might get some details of a planned trilogy. But um, things are moving ahead, and it's looking like as if it's going to be directed by someone called Wes Ball. Wes Ball? I don't know who that is. Uh, should I know? I, I think I the name does sound familiar, and I'm pretty sure we've um, we've watched something of his Maze Runner. Oh, Maze Runner. Okay, Jinx. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, Maze, so Runner, Maze Runner. All of them. All, all the Maze Runners, pretty much. Basically, yeah. So okay. if that excites you, okay. I mean, I'm not I'm not particularly excited by the Maze Runner, but you know, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but we'll see. But I mean, the Planet of the Apes are like you know is a storyline which they could milk and like you know they bought the rights to it so maybe they did mm. thinking okay yeah let's kind of kick start this whole thing all right keeping yeah. it with the mcu now um we're going to be speaking a bit about uh obi-wan kenobi a bit later on but check that you and mcgregor devoured apparently there's been secret talks have been held you mm. and mcgregor is going to be joining the mcu now he's already been in the dc eu universe he, he yeah, appeared the, in um, uh, Birds of Prey. He was in Birds Hardly of Prey. He played a villain there. Yeah. yeah. He's been in the Black Star Mask. Wars universe. Yeah. He's yeah. been in the Star Wars universe. And now they're talking about um yeah, him joining the MCU. Now, I mean, could it be a you know, could it be a hero? Could it be a villain? Who knows? But what do you think of having you McGregor as, as part of the MCU? I mean, they they they're bringing everyone over, man. I'm not surprised. Is it, once you're on the Disney payroll, mm. that's it. You're going to interchange between the IPs. Taika Waititi came through as Star as a sorry as a Thor. He's yeah. in Star Wars. I mean, yeah. the, the interoperability. That's not the right word I was using. The interchangeability is just yeah. yeah it's it's just it's so there, obvious. Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. Yeah, and they're saying that the project that he could be working on is. Fantastic Four. Mm, how? So, Why? I mean, could he be? Could he? Could he be Doom? Baxter. Doom. Victor Von Doom. Could he? Could he do Victor Von Doom? I would have thought they were going for someone younger, younger. maybe. But I don't know. You know, Doom. I wouldn't want because, to see because because Doom is this. Him. We we haven't seen like a proper proper incarnation of Doom because Doom is like let's not kind of beat around the bush. He is he's a villain, a proper villain. He's super powerful. Yeah. He kind of like um, what we've seen so far in the movies is nothing, man. So mm. if they what they're saying is the teases that we're getting with Doctor Strange and kind of you know some of the other movies that are going to be coming out. Do you know Doom? They could be leading up to having us. You know, mm. if if we see a Doctor Doom, then obviously, then we got to see the Fantastic Four come in there to sort him out. Yeah, Doom is a massive character. He's not just a person with a metal mask and you know wants to rule the world. He's mad intelligent. He has access to technologies, whether it's scientific or magical, uh, and his his ability to grasp and use it is almost like Thanos level, almost yeah. like Thanos level. So. He is someone not to be messed with, you know. Yeah. He's really, Absolutely. yeah, and he's got his own, his own, he's got his own country, Latveria. So yeah, Latveria, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So he, he's got his own place. Like you can't cross his borders, otherwise it's beef. You know, he, he kind of reminds me of Magneto a bit. He's got his his political agenda and he's got his powers, and you know he'll live by those uh, 
by those ideologies. So it's, in, it's an interesting, he's a very interesting character. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And kind of, I, um, I mean, I mean, yeah, we will get onto new on streaming, but listen, uh, multiverse of madness. I had to fast forward to the, the Illuminati mm. scene. I had to watch mm. that, that whole thing again, yeah. man. It, it's just like, man. Yeah. It's great. I mean, like, um, you know, seeing the, you know, Reed Richards, that whole thing, um, will they bring him back, John Krasinski back on again? Who knows? But I mean, yeah, it was all interesting. And obviously they're connected to, you know, Victor Von Doom. So yeah, we'll see what happens there. But listen, uh, that's your movie news, folks. Let's get on to new on streaming. I've already mentioned Ewan McGregor, already mentioned Star Wars. So Obi-Wan Kenobi, this has ended. And uh, Devout, I didn't get a chance to fit in the final episode. So you're going to have to fill in some gaps for me. Does it... Okay. Does it kind of is there like a bow tie to everything? Is it does it is does it all neat nicely fit in, or is it still like uh... it's a bow tie, but it's a clip on bow tie if I can say. (laughs) I like it. Um, Yeah. The the final two episodes are the best episodes of of all of all the six, and yeah, it's better. There's better fight scenes, and you know, lots more happens. It's better. That's all I can say. But Mm. there are still some unanswered questions. There are still some stupid bits. Uh, certain a, a certain character comes back, and you think, "How how are you there?" It's just a bit weird in some parts, but it's not something that you're going to be surprised about because of how the whole season has gone. Right? You know, it has divided the, the Star Wars community massively. This Obi Wan so series. D- does it does it open up a, a season two? Not 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 direct. Not uh. Not directly, as in, you know, it's not blatant in your face that season two is going to happen. Mm. It, I think it maybe depends on the on the sentiment from the, the community. If they want a season two, so far, it sounds like they probably won't. But, you know, Star Wars, you know, the, Disney want to make money and they you know, they can if they want. I just don't know how they'll do it, though. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen... The whole Star Wars universe, it's just like, you know, it's, it is expanding. Obviously, we've got Mandalorian coming up. I wonder if we're yeah. going to get a Book of Boba Fett season two. Who knows? But re- listen, we've got Ashoka coming up. There's kind of, um, you know, there's other kind of projects in the mm. works which they're working on. And who knows whether or not Obi people... Uh, oh, and um, what's the other one with um, Andor? That's going to be... That looks mm. great. That looks yeah. kind of good, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. You know, so it's all this stuff going on. Uh, the rumours are that they might give um, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, they might give her mm. a, a Star Wars movie to make. And she has directed an episode or two. A couple of episodes of, of Mandalorian. Mandalorian, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so she's in there. Her dad's in there. He's directed yeah. uh, Solo. Yeah. And, you know, so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that one. All right, let's move on to this next one. Now, Deval, I mean, I've got to say, Ms. Marvel, uh, you know, the first two episodes were kind of, like, yeah, they were, they were, they were, you know, interesting, really good. I kind of liked them, liked the vibe. This one, I don't know, there was just something about it, which I just kind of, I couldn't get into the episode. Maybe it's yeah. because there was just too many things going on. There was like, I don't know, maybe too much backstory. The villains in there are, I don't know, they're not well drawn out or well kind of, um, I don't know what it was, but there was definitely something which was like, hang on a second, like where the hell are these like these guys coming from? And like something was missing in this episode and maybe you can kind of, I don't know, shed some light on it, but Compared to episode number one and number two, this has definitely mm. been the weakest one. I think we've only got maybe, you know, a couple of more episodes to go. Hopefully they can pick it back up again. But there's something missing in this mid part of Ms. Marvel. I really mm. hope that they can kind of glue it all back together again and just, you know, keep me kind of in it. But I don't know. What, yeah. what was your take on it? I think what I think what you lacked or what maybe made the episode not stand out for you was maybe the it was the villains that, that came through and also the fight scenes as well. Yeah. I think the fight scenes are very cartoonish and very uh, like common for Disney, any sort of Disney property to do where you've got some sort of kid running through a room of five or four villains. They can't get their hands on her. Exactly. Or him, and they seem to be evading blows and, and doing things that just don't make sense. But you got, obviously it's a kid's, well, not kids, but the tone of the show is, yeah. I guess, aimed at the younger audience. But 
when you see it and how it's you know shown mm. it's just something that just makes you think oh come on kind of thing you know so i think that that kind of affects your enjoyability of it Exactly. No, exactly. And then I'm just thinking, well, listen, look, they had uh, Hawkeye and that was kind of like a bit more kind of, you know, upscale kind of like fighting and everything like that. Although there were some funny bits in there, but I'm like, you know, they could have given it a, maybe a bit of that vibe to it. But listen, the way those villains, the way they got caught at the end, I was like, what? They're just going quietly. but yeah. <laughs> It's like, what is going on? These are supposed to be like, you know, the clandestines. They- I don't, I don't know what, like... I don't know what they are or what they're doing. They're not of, and... of Earth and they're just walking away in handcuffs. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Exactly. They even try and fight the police. Come on. So it's There's just like... Joke. That lady, what can she do? That lady, that... that, that the the leader. Do? What was she yeah. going to do? She just stands around like this all the time. This is what she does. <laughs> this is why I was so annoyed. I was like, give us... Like, listen, give us a villain that is like just as, you know, that has so as much depth and as much kind of character and as much flaws and whatever as the, the main kind of like, you know, character and everything. And I'm there. You will have mm. me, Disney. But this mm. one, oh, man. So they've lost me a bit on this third episode. Hopefully, I mean, I'm still going to watch it. Don't get me wrong. I'm still mm. going to kind of invest my time in it. But I really hope that they can kind of, pay, you know, pick it up and piece it all together and we can kind of get a link up to the marvels or monica yeah. uh, not monica rambo um um photon is it photon, photon. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know we get something that leads on mm. to kind of like you know the next project uh so listen yeah so ms marvel is definitely out go check that one out and the boys oh my gosh man season f- mm. uh, ep- episode five is called hero gasm mm. and this i wasn't expecting this divider i wasn't expecting the showdown so mm. early on, but well, the showdown between uh, Homelander yeah. and Soldier uh, Boy, Soldier Boy, and what's his name? But not Butch. I keep wanting to say Butch. Yeah, Butcher. Oh, Butcher. So yeah, Butcher. Butcher and Huey. <laughs> I wasn't sure how strong and Huey. Yeah, I wasn't sure sure how strong like physically Butcher is compared to mm. Homelander. Homelander still seems to be the most powerful one though. Like, but why Boy was strong. why was Butcher able to take his punches? Because he's strong, but he's not as strong. That's why he was bleeding a bit, I think. Because mm. he, was, he was bleeding a bit. Homelander didn't really shed any blood. But uh, I think Homelander still is stronger. Because he flew away. Three of them were yeah. holding him down. Yeah. And they still couldn't, like, you know, do his thing. Um, here's the thing. Um, could could so could Soldier Boy beat Homelander one-on-one? With based that, on with that. that no, he, he can beat him with that big blast he's got. That's what yeah. can defeat him. Homelander, but I think hand, pound for pound, punch for punch, I don't think he can beat Homelander. Mm. And obviously, Homelander, Homelander's got the eyes as well. But, yeah. but Soldier Boy, I, I didn't realize he was so tough. <laughs> Even that aside, the hero gasm part of it, that <laughs> has been spoken about for, for ages. Oh People have been gosh, speaking. Man. This is straight from the comics, but in the comics, yes. it's worse. But that whole like orgy with Orgies. the heroes, basically. You know, there's that dildos crazy. flying around. Yeah. There's the guy, there's the guy, the miniature, the version guy, he kind of yeah. like, he, he pops up in there as well and pops out at some point as well. Yeah. So there's a, there's a mother's milk. So Laz Alonzo, the actor who plays mother's milk, he yeah. always gets the short end of things. I remember in season two, he got strangled by like a, like a 20 foot like penis. In yeah. this one, spoiler alert, he gets squirted on by mm. what can, what I can only describe as like a giant. So, so yeah. like a giant, like basically, like you know, like comes on his face, basically. Everywhere, and and also the the other like long dick. When, when he knocks on the door, the long dick comes out, and then the guy that was like a Ant Man type thing. I think he's gone inside someone's <laughs> uh, fanny. It's about it's weird. Two weeks in a row, I mentioned him fanny, but he goes inside someone's fanny. He comes out and he's big again, and he's all wet, and he because because uh, uh, Mama's Milk has got OCD, hasn't he? That's yeah, he's why got any little yeah. thing he doesn't like dirt. He doesn't like things touching him. So imagine that someone's been inside someone's fanny, and then he touches him in his coat, and he's like, ah, my coat. <laughs> he goes like, what the hell is this shit? And then he's got a kind of like change and everything. Oh, it's just so funny. Um, you know what? I mean, Crazy. this is like the best show. Like seriously, you you just got to yeah. watch this. And um, you know, they've done what they've done with the show is obviously they're taking it from 
you know, the, the comic book so that you have the source material. But mm. for me, there's a, there's a scene in this uh, episode divider where Homelander, he's basically looking in the mirror mm. and he's talking to himself. So it's like, almost like as if he's got, to, it's like a split personality. So there's mm-hmm. one side, which yeah. is the strong, which is kind of like the arrogant side of him. And then the other side is the weak side. And he's mm-hmm. having this conversation. I'm telling you, man, that actor, Anthony Starr, he's but, brilliant. Yeah. He's really good. good. He's really good. Yeah. So, folks, um, you should be watching The Boys. And uh, if you are watching it, please do let us know what you think. And, uh, yeah, what's your favorite bit on that one? All right, let's do trailers, Devaldo. Now, this one, they, them, this is kind of scary sounding. Yeah, they, them. Like, just from the title, what do you think that is? Kind of like a, a woke, uh, kind of like you know, like you know, a very woke. But it could be something sinister as well. Them, like, what are yeah. they? What are them? No, you're right. You're right. They them is obviously uh, how people like to be uh, like categorized, like addressed. That's not, yeah. that's not the right word, addressed or identified. That's the right yeah. word. Yeah. So they them him her, you know. Uh, uh, so this is a film about uh, a bunch of, uh, I think, I believe they're all gay. And they all go to a gay conversion camp. Oh, shit. Yeah. I think they all go to a gay conversion camp. Kevin Bacon is there. I think he's the sort of head honcho at a gay oh conversion camp. And then obviously shit happens. This is a Shudder movie. So this is about yeah, horror. This is going to be horror. Uh, yeah. And I guess they, them, is... I guess the sort of modern version of maybe identifying someone and how maybe they would they would want to be di- identified, but also it could be uh, alluding to the, some of the sinister people in the movie as well. But yeah, the trailer is only about a minute and a half long. It seems like a you know a fun horror film, but go check it out. Yeah, they, I mean, they... yeah, it kind of does have that kind of sinister kind of uh, you know um, um, vibe to going on there. So yeah, please do go check that one out. Now this one, Westworld. Like, man, I mean, I'm not sure about you, Deval, but I didn't, I, I think I saw, like, the first episode of season three. I've still got okay. to catch up on season three, man, because it was set in the future, but I don't know, uh, or a kind of, like, a future, futuristic thing. But, I mean, yeah, man, what's happening with Westworld season four? What's going on here? It just looks like more confusion. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> season three, I had to watch about five YouTube videos explaining what happened in season two to get me ready for it because it's very very complex it's like it's really complex and you've got to really pay attention and yeah that's all i can say but the season four looks like i think it might be the last season you know i think but yeah uh it's looking obviously tandy ray newton's in it aaron paul he's back in it as well from breaking bad yep uh and all the rest of our cast and crew are in it but it does look like it's going to be very very complex again and it looks interesting, don't get me wrong. You know, it could be ahead of its time, but yeah, go check out the trailer, about two and a half minutes long, and it's coming out this summer. So in the next month, it's coming out. Yeah, go check that one out. Now, listen, uh, if you want to watch uh, something on Amazon, this is going to be coming out really soon. This is a new TV show called The Terminal List, and oh. it's coming out on the 1st of July. So I think that's, when is the 1st of July? That's like what? Um, Real soon, a couple of days time. That's like next Friday. Mm. Next Friday, the terminal list. This one it stars uh, Chris Pratt, and um, when I saw uh, the trailer for this Devado, it had serious uh, vibes of. Remember his movie that he did with Amazon Prime, the the Tomorrow World, uh, the Tomorrow oh, War yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he's yeah. got to go back in time, or they got to go back in time to fight some aliens. Yeah. It's kind of had that vibe to it. Uh, so this is based on. Um, a series of books written by a guy called, uh, where is it over here? Um, Jack Carr, who's a former Navy SEAL. So oh. his exploits turned into kind of like a, like, you know, a book series and it stars Chris Pratt, Taylor Kish and Patrick Schwarzenegger. And, okay. um, so basically the plot line of this is J- James Reese, um, you know, Chris Pratt, he returns home mm. after his entire pollu- platoon of Navy SEALs is ambushed only to discover new dark forces working against him and endangering the ones he loves. So all his pollu- platoons be taken out and he's on a mission to basically get revenge. So in, think of like, you know, Jack Ryan, think of Reacher, 
think of Jason Bourne, think of like, you know, amalgamation of all those kind of action revenge flick movies that we've all seen, you know, mm-hmm. Jack Clancy and all that. And you're pretty much going to be there. So um, a couple of interesting things. He's doing a TV series, Chris Pratt. W- yeah. Would you think of that? I mean, I, I think it's not a surprise. Quite a lot of uh, sort of A-list Hollywood stars are doing these mini series on, on you know, on these streaming platforms. Mm. They're getting paid well for it, and I think the key is that it is mini. It won't be more than eight eight episodes, if yeah. if that, you know. So the commitment time isn't going to be like six months of the year or something like that, or a whole year, you know. So yeah, I think it's yeah, I think you should do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll find out. We'll we'll give it a watch. Uh, there's actually a couple of things on Amazon Prime, Devaldo, that um that uh that I need to kind of you know pick up on. There's a couple of sci-fi things that I want to watch. And I know you've seen yeah. Open Range and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, there's a few things on there that we can actually check out over the next couple of weeks, and this could be one of those ones if we can fit it all in. But the other movie, Deval, uh, I think we should let our listeners know about is this thing called Smile which mm. is pretty disturbing. So um, it's the, I mean, the trailer is only a couple of minutes long and it's kind of, um, uh, it, I, I, we got kind of serious. It follow vi- it follows vibes to this uh, about a contagious uh, smile that if you see the, if you see something, it makes you smile. And then, you know, mm. a couple of days later you end up dying. Mm. And it's literally the trailer is, creepy people with smiles on their faces and it's just weird isn't it Deval? i mean i'm i want to watch this and for me uh it follows is one of the best horror films modern yeah. horror films i've seen came out in 2014 i believe and uh yeah if smile is anything like that because it's <laughs> you know sometimes the scariest things aren't creepy monsters and all this blood and all that kind of stuff it's an idea you know mm. it's an idea of something such innocent as a smile being the contagious thing that is going to end your life and imagine a world where that's the case you know and oh. seeing a smile you'd be you'd be terrified but it should be it should be the opposite so this seems like it's going to be a really really good film i can't wait for it i think it's out in september yeah but uh, i'm looking forward to this one this looks good go check out the trailer right now honestly yeah, it's- it's really good. Just go check it out and let us know what you think. All right, let's move on to Anniversary Corner. We've got a couple of movies, I think, over here. So yeah. um, let's do this one. An antiviral devout. This is, I reviewed this movie on the show. I think I remember. Yeah, I think I remember. This one. This is, this is David Cronenberg's son who directed this movie. And um, I'm telling you, man, uh, what I remember from, you know, from watching it, was it's it's a body horror it's set in a future where people um they get inject uh, they they, yeah. they 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 inject themselves and like you know it was really kind of like weird and this guy he plays a uh, Caleb Landry Jones yeah he's kind of like yeah. a strange kind of um actor he kind of uh, uh, looking actor he kind of he people want to be injected by viruses because it gives them a sense of kind of like yeah. uh, celebrity. I think it's a celebrity viruses that are it. sicknesses or something. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. It's, mm. it's weird. It's a weird movie. And that kind of fits nicely. There's, there's a connection with the movie that we're going to be speaking about because um, the director of that movie is um, David Cronenberg's son. But the other movie on Anniversary Corner is Eastern Promises, directed by David Cronenberg. I love this movie, man. Yeah. This and was a stars great Vigo movie. Mortesen, Vigo Mortesen, who's in yeah. uh, the film we're going to talk about later as well. Uh, and yeah, this film here, I still can't get my head around the bathroom fight scene oh. in Eastern Promises. So Eastern Promises is a movie about, it's Russian, isn't it? Yeah. Set in London. Set in London, yeah. So it's so 2007 film. So how long is that? That's two, 15 years ago. Mm. Uh, it's uh, so a teenager dies during child's birth and leaves uh, leaves her journal that so that they, so that a child basically it's about uh, Russian gangsters in London yeah. and someone wants to find out about a teenager's uh, death and it's like you know investigate stuff and they they actually get deeper into the sort of Russian gangsters, they get someone, yeah, someone Russian else who's in the, in, in, the, in the Russian gangster world wants to help her. And, you know, it's all, it's all sort of linked to wanting to find out the truth, but you get to find out the underworld of Russian gangsters and mm-hmm. how they work and what the tattoos mean. And it's just a deep, 
deep film and the bathroom yeah. fights with are all naked, naked. And they've got a fight to the death it's a crazy crazy yeah. film so if you can watch it watch it it's got uh vigo mortessen it's got uh naomi watts who we've seen yeah. in the ring as well as other films uh and it's a deep film go watch it that's what i'm gonna say yeah 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 um yeah, that's it. And like, I mean, that that moves us nicely into kind of like, you know, the film reviews. So Crimes of the Future is a new David Cronenberg movie. And um, I can't remember the last David Cronenberg movie that I watched, man. It, it definitely wasn't uh, Eastern, Europe, uh, Eastern, Eastern Promises. I'm pretty sure there was something else after that. But this is the new one that he's come up with. And uh, again, mm. it's uh, like you said, it's starring Viggo Mortensen. Uh, it stars uh, Leia Sedur, Kristen Stewart from Twilight Days. And um, I listen, I mean, we kind of came across this movie, right? We were like, OK, look, you know, there's a new movie. out. We've heard a lot about it. Apparently it mm -hmm. was shown at the Cannes Film Festival and people walked out. And those are the out. types of movies. Yeah, those are the type of movies that we want to watch, right? Because we want to, you know, we want to be challenged. We want to kind of, you know, see the movies that get us to kind of think and kind of, you know, ponder, shit, what did I just watch? Yeah. So we went out, we watched this movie, and I'm still scratching my head, Devado, on what this movie means. But um, it's body horror, it's David Cronenberg, and it's like, it's very weird. And like, if you know his work, like Naked Lunch, Crash, and, um, you know, The Fly and everything, fly, he has this yeah. fascination, Devado, with exploring, you know, what is going to happen to our bodies in the future and this movie is set in the future in a world where bodies have kind of uh, they've been ch they've changed to such an extent that they grow their own organs and there's and a funny don't feel pain yeah that's what i was gonna say there's, there's a funny link between pain and sex almost because in this film people are cutting cutting themselves up in some sort of body art uh display Mm. And that, you know, just through cutting someone's body up and stuff, it's almost like they're experiencing orgasms. And it looks like it's just really weird. And these displays of body art are, are there. People are watching as someone's on this, like, bed and they're getting cut up. And there's a scene. <laughs> there's a scene in the film where... <laughs> <laughs> it's mad because there's different people that are so-called experts when it comes to this body art and all that and they have different shows and there's one guy who's you know he's done a, dis a display of a man uh who's got all these ears on him <laughs> he's got like a hundred ears all over his yeah. body that's it just ears and this person's doing this dance yeah. they're <laughs> naked the together, man. yeah they're naked and they're doing this massive this dance just there and it, just imagine someone naked doing this dance alone, yeah? But then imagine them with, like, just a hundred ears. All like over their body. All over their body. Head. And the crowd's watching, like, loving it. Just and imagine that. That's the right. future. That's crazy. Exactly. And it's there's just... a sex scene. There, there's a sex... Well, I mean, I, I want to say sex scene, but it's not really, like, the like mm. the sex scene that we know, like, you know, where there's mm. penetration or anything like that. Where Vigo Mortensen and uh, Leah Sadur, they... they, they they basically they're cutting themselves and this they're on this mm. bed so this machine is cutting them and they you know that is the form of uh kind of like sex mm. or, or they, they get turned yeah. on on it but uh, uh there's, there's a, a bit, bit in... there was a bit where kirsten stewart or Kristen stewart sorry yeah she goes to kiss vigo mortessen or vigo mortessen and he, he's like uh oh, uh oh, sorry <laughs> I'm not good at the old sex. It's like <laughs> he couldn't even kiss her because he can't do the old form of, you know, of that interaction. It's mad. Yeah. This film's mad. It's this film a is mad. madness. But listen, mad. what message what message is he going for? Like what like David Cronin, is he saying that eventually, like, you know, what you know, the, what I got from it was like, you know, he's just saying that our bodies are, we're, we're using our bodies as art now, like a lot mm. now, like online. And, you know, when you, when you kind of look at some, you know, we, we, we're changing our bodies all the time. And his, his take on it is that at some point in this future, mm. it, it, the body changed to such an effect that, you know, they become grotesque and they kind of like, you know, start changing and morphing into other things. Mm. Um, yeah. Art in its very nature is subject to 
the observer. And in that, in that respect, it's subject to when it's observed. Because somebody a, a thousand years ago could look at something and think, wow, that's art. In a thousand years' time, that thing could be seen, as, so, so, could be seen differently. Yeah. And this crimes of the future is depicting you know, humanity in a certain in a level of evolution or devolution, however you want to look at it, yeah. and how they express themselves sexually and in, in society and how to, you know, try and uh, be the best, I guess, forms of themselves. And t to us, in our minds now, it just looks weird. It looks like it's self-harm. It seems crazy. But we're looking at it from our perspective. This is sometime in the future when these things are acceptable and the human body itself has evolved to receive it as acceptable. So it's just, it's weird. It's, it's, it's very much, it's almost like an... It's very experimental, the film. Oh, just, and also an experiment, yeah. just in what they do in the film, because they're experimenting on themselves as well in trying to get to the next level or to do the best display or to find out something new, a new organ. So this is an experimental film in every sense, and it kind of links onto the next film we're going to talk about in experiments as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's just a weird film. Great. It's worth watching. It's just weird. It's yeah, weird. it is. The one final thing that I want to say is there's there's one bit in there where she kind of he Vigo gets an, uh, um, something done to his body, and he gets there's a zip in his body, and mm. in that zip is like his organs are, and then she starts going down like yeah. you know on it, and she starts licking the whole thing yeah. like as if she's going inside, and I was just like. Oh, Oh my gosh, man! It's just how, like incredible. How do you sign up for a film like this? At what point do you read the script and think, "Yeah, I'm doing yeah. this"? Like how? how? I think it's him, right? I think it's David Cronenberg. People want to work yeah. with David Cronenberg. That's it. That's it. Exactly. That's so, it. David, if you've got a script for us, we will love it. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on to uh, the next movie that we're going to speak about. Deval just mentioned. Uh, experiments this one is spiderhead you can catch this on netflix and it was released uh maybe about a week ago or i don't know but like a week and a half ago a couple of weeks ago and this is chris hemsworth miles teller uh they're the kind of like two main kind of uh actors in this and um i've heard something online i was doing a bit of reading chris hemsworth has turned around and said now that the movie he wants to make more movies in australia or like you know this neck of the woods so oh, yeah yeah, and I think this was kind of like, um, I think it was made over, you know, COVID, during COVID and everything. And, uh, you know, he kind of doesn't want to travel too far out. Thor, Love and Thunder, that was filmed over here as well in oh, Australia, okay. uh, New Zealand and stuff like that. So, you know, he's kind of, you know, I, I think he's trying to uh, do different types of roles away from the whole Thor thing. And this mm. movie, Devaldo, is a departure, right? You've you got to say that about Chris Hemsworth. He can do the action movies. He can do the Thor superhero movies. But he's also got this movie where he plays, in my opinion, like, you know, he plays the character really well, but he's a right asshole in this movie. He is. And he is the sort of arsehole that is successful in this day and age. Yeah. The sort that gets things done, the sorts that... You know, by any means necessary, uh, if they've got a, a you know a target or an objective, they will meet that objective, and the, the world will celebrate that objective and not see how they got to it. And I think that's the sort of person that he was in this role. He was very mm. focused and in a sort of nihilistic way. He's you know it doesn't matter it doesn't matter who is going to suffer in the process, but he wants to get his uh, what's that award that they have again? The uh, what's that award that they have? You know these. The uh, Nobel, Nobel, Nobel. Nobel. Is that the one he said, I think. I, I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, no, it's, an, it's an interesting. Yeah, go on. No, sorry, go on. What you say? It's an interesting character uh, for him to play. I think. Definitely interesting. And like, look, look, let's get into kind of what the movie's about. So it's a science fiction movie. It's kind of like maybe set in the future. I mean, I don't know if it's set in the future, but it's, it's a, you know, it's definitely science fiction and it's set in a, a kind of offshore uh, penitentiary, like an offshore prison. But this prison, the inmates, they have a lot of freedom. They can go where they want to go. They can have, you know, food and they can have access to TVs. Uh, the only thing is, though, they are being experimented on. And Chris Hemsworth, he's the lead scientist or he's the creator of this kind of program 
where he is checking for uh, how the inmates react to certain chemicals in the body. And Chris Hemsworth has power over those chemicals. So he can, he can put more of those chemicals in your body to see what your reaction is. And those chemicals affect things like your fear, your, your kind of like your, you know, who you're attracted to, um, whether or not you can see things like, uh, almost like as if that he can project something in your mind uh, and you could be seeing like a sunshine and like, you know, a beach, but really you're maybe standing outside like a pile of rubbish. So he's got a lot of power, you know, manipulating people and he's trying to crack a particular strain of this, 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 this thing, what he's doing where uh, I think uh, if I can remember correctly is if he gives you the love potion bit that once you've taken gone off that love potion, are you still in love with the person? Do you remember that bit? Yeah, because he was like trying to find. Like they, yeah, so he wants to give them that uh, that chemical to induce that emotion, but then to see if they were totally reliant on it, or after yeah. the after the you know the, the the chemicals worn off, is there any sort of residual emotions that yeah. they have then created themselves so he wants to know is it super is, is the emotion reliant on the on the chemical or the situation mm. almost but it's, it's it's quite technical but then this film also made me think of the morality of it as well yeah because when you think of the experiment just as as, you, as you've outlined yes these people are prisoners they've committed crimes they have uh you know they're in a place where well, I guess they're in a place where they've now said, okay, you know, they've given their permission to be there. But before they were put on this spider head, you know, island, they were in a prison where, you know, they've, you know, I guess some of the some of the most violent criminals are put, mm -hmm. and they have an option to leave that place and go somewhere a bit more hospitable. Well, not a bit more, a lot more hospitable. Yeah. But at the same time, you you are now saying we can experiment experiment on you to get these outcomes and i think a lot of prisoners you know i think they would say yes to it yeah you know, they're not going to be hurt yeah you know so i think yeah. i think a lot of prisoners will say yeah take, take me there i would rather you know go through this and have a nice you know be on an island be free no bars mm. you know so the morality part of it a lot of people would be like no this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong yeah. but me, do you know what? I'll do it. You know, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, if I was a prisoner, I'll, I'll sign up for it. And at the same time, I think, you know, some some of these some of these chemicals that they're using, obviously the film is crazy. And it all, all goes, massive. you know, go, all goes tits up. But just just think of the use. I, I, I sound like a Jurassic Park scientist <laughs> now, but just think of the use. Just think of the application. You sound like Oh my god! You. Yeah, it's true. Think of the application of these chemicals that you can use in the real world for for those people. Think of like okay, someone who has I don't know, let's say, you know, uh, a, a really bad criminal or someone that mm -hmm. you know is doing bad things in society, and you're able to put this drug on them that turns them around and they can become mm -hmm. a useful member of society. society. So it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's, that, it's very it's, much and out there. And they say but... that. And, and, and there is that kind of morality thing in there, like, you know, um, but there's one bit in there where, um, you know, he gives the love juice to kind of, uh, so it's Miles, Miles Teller, he's one of the kind of inmates in there. He gives the, Chris Emsworth gives the love juice to kind of him. And then he has to have, um, he ends up having sex with the, you know, one of the other inmates. And then um, he gives... Uh, there's an older lady older inmate yeah. that comes into there as well he's like no nah, i don't i can't have sex with her please don't make me have sex with her but then there was one bit where they bring in a guy this guy like you just said he's like a murderer nathan this... jones. he's a wrestler nathan jones is that him okay him. Nathan guy's jones, massive. He, was in, he was in troy as well from 2004 and he was a wrestler in wwe he's massive yeah. he's australian Australian oh, as well. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a bit in there where Miles Teller's like, please do not give me the love because he can't, you can't remember. Or can you remember it? I can't remember if you can remember it or not. Um, I think you can remember it, but you can't control it. Can, you can't, can't control, control it. The overwhelming love you have when they put the chemical in you. And these chemical packs are fused to their back. Yeah. So they can literally administer this chemical through their phone and just boop, 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 boop. And that's it. It's done. 
Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's it's mad. It's it's guy. It was directed actually by a guy, the the guy who did Top Gun. Yeah, uh, Joseph like, Kaczynski. Top Gun Maverick. He also directed Oblivion with Tom Cruise. Also directed uh, Tron Legacy as well from like 2010. Mm, so okay, yeah. okay, mm, and it's written by um Rhett, Rhett, Rhett Reese who wrote Deadpool. Or he's connected to kind of like Deadpool. Oh, okay, um, yeah. So there's kind of that whole kind of you know, mm. you know, there's that vibe there. It's an interesting movie, and like I said before, people will go out there to watch it for Chris Hemsworth because obviously he's the big guy, and. Mm. You know, people will be thinking, okay, let's see him. We've seen him do Thor. We've seen him do the whole superhero stuff. We've seen him do the action yeah. stuff in like extraction. Can he do the other kind of dr more dramatic stuff? And he's creepy in this, like, you know, the way yeah. he kind of, you know, he's looked, he's very shifty, very shady, and yeah. uh, he has ulterior motives and everything. So, yeah, man, it's good. You know, it's an interesting movie. You know, it's not like a wow for me, but, yeah. um, it's got interesting concepts in there. And like you said, Deval, the whole thing about morality, would you sign up for it? You're giving power to someone else over your body. Yeah. It's a tough Clinical question. Clinical trials on the next level. The only unconvincing bit for me was a fight between Chris Hemsworth and Miles Teller. Chris oh. Hemsworth is massive. Even though he's wearing a suit, he's still massive. Yeah. And Miles Teller somehow comes on top. Yeah, other powers. Chris in Hemsworth... You know what Chris Hemsworth can do. We've seen him, but in his film, he's like, he's weak. <laughs> you know, he doesn't really fight properly. So apart from me, yeah, that was the only weird bit. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Well, listen, folks, film. yeah, go go check those out. Uh, Spiderhead, you can catch on Netflix and Crimes of the Future. Yeah. Uh, you should be able to find um, in your local Elsewhere. cinema. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> elsewhere or elsewhere. Yes, elsewhere. Uh, and that's it. That's all we've got time for on this week's episode. We really hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. We've got some uh, new movies that we're going to be speaking about. And obviously, Black Phone, July... The Black Phone next week. I think I'm yes. going to try and watch The Black Phone with Ethan Hawke next week. I've and heard then some the week after about that, it. we've got Thor, Love and Thunder. So a good couple of weeks coming up. Good couple of weeks coming out. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, keep a lot with us and we'll see you on the next one. Don't week. forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Just pop in the Flicksters podcast.